peace of heart and soul, the beauty in life, heaven and earth be given you and fill you this day. Jesus gives a whole series of you have heard, but I tell you statements in the Sermon on the Mount. Verses 21 and 22 begin the first of those. In this one, he says, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. This is the word of the Lord. I do have some thoughts on this one. It seems a little harsh, don't you think? Is calling someone a fool bad enough to be equated with murder? Make us liable to hell? It's more than a little frightening to think Jesus have, may have meant that literally. I know I'd be held guilty. Would I be condemned? Let's put that question aside for a moment and talk more about this pattern of conversation. Every you have heard represents some scripturally based teaching. Every but I tell you, overturns everything the crowd has been taught and proposes a whole new standard by which to judge behavior. A standard they're much less likely to meet. Not many people commit murder. It's easy to point a finger at those who do and sit in judgment upon them as we heave a sigh of relief and think, at least I'm not guilty of that. Jesus doesn't allow us that sense of relief. His words forcefully turn our face inward toward places we try to conceal, even from ourselves. We all have them, those spots where nastiness hides and grows and festers, the petri dishes that grow evil. Murder is only one of the ugly growths that can develop there. Abuse, bullying, deliberate unkindness, and demeaning or hurtful words are a few of the others. God judges the heart. We may not murder, but we all get angry now and then. We all occasionally lash out with an insult, which means, if we're honest with ourselves, that we're all guilty. That ugliness that hides within makes us all liable to God's judgment. We can't point a finger at anyone else when it's only by the love and grace of God that we ourselves are let off the hook. If these words of Jesus make us aware of that, then perhaps they've accomplished what he wanted. So be it. In The Shaping of Prophecy, Adrian Hastings writes, at the end of it all, we need to recognize that it is an inevitable part of our moral being as humans that we are sinners, sharing every one of us in a quality of guiltiness. It is from within a community of the guilty that we have to approach guilt, not as, pop, as people who stand outside or think that it is even possible to stand outside. 
Here's the blessing I leave you with today. May you have the courage to humbly admit your own share of sin and the wisdom to realize that in God's eyes, you are no better than anyone else. But as you go through this day, may you yet feel God's love deep down in your heart and sense God's peace enfolding you. For both are there, even in our sin. You are blessed. Amen.